Well, welcome everybody. We're really excited about today's show of the Passive House Accelerator Construction Tech. And uh, we're coming live from uh, BCIT in British Columbia. So uh, you'll hear more about that very soon. I wanted to say a couple words about the Passive House Accelerator. We're a collaborative online platform for sharing innovation and thought leadership in Passive House design and construction. We publish articles and interviews. We produce weekly virtual confabs like this one and the uh, Global Passive House Happy Hour that happens tomorrow. And our aim is to elevate the work and programming of the Passive House movement's leaders, practitioners, and organizations through interviews, articles, social media campaigns, video, podcasts. Our, and we're working to catalyze zero carbon building by accelerating the adoption of Passive House building. And construction tech, and today um, I mentioned is with Alex Hebert of, P of BCIT, and there's construction tech. So we're celebrating the technical, the technique, the technology of passive house construction um, on Tuesdays. So our, our handsome hosts are Kevin Brennan, Sean St. Amore, and, and Mark Willey. And uh, each week we welcome guest practitioners to dive in the de into the details of practice with the builder and tradesperson as our target audience. We welcome folks from all corners of the construction design world uh, to join us each week and we're really happy you're here. Thank you. Welcome to the, to the show this week. Uh, it's really exciting to, to be talking about the tradesperson training and the labs that have been created around, the, around North America here. Uh, it's exciting to be part of it. As uh, I was introduced to the Passive House Tradesperson course by taking a long trip over to Ireland with the Passive House Academy, there was a large group of people from the, the US and Canada that were introduced to the first Passive House Tradesperson class given in the English, in the English language in Ireland. And uh, a lot of thought leaders were in that group, Sam McAfee, uh, Tim McDonald, Ken, uh, a bunch of other people that were there. Sandra Roller was actually in there who teaches at BCIT and uh, myself, Adam Romano, and uh, a bunch of people. The, the goal was to create these little training centers throughout North America. And uh, we had one in New York City where I, I'm training for a while with the Association for Energy Affordability over the past seven years. That's where I met Mark. Mark uh, was a participant in one of those trainings. And Fast forward five years, you know, five years ago, I was able to uh, to teach the, tra the train the trainer at BCIT to the, the team at BCIT to set up the training for Passive House Canada. And I got to meet all the lovely people at BCIT and was blown away by their facility. Um, uh, the way they teach the trades there, hands on work early in the morning, carpenters swinging hammers, plumbers you know, dancing around with plumbing wrenches uh, early in the morning, but just the culture of training the trades is, in, is, is amazing there and it should be spread throughout North America. And then their emphasis on high performance and the knowledge of the students in the class about just basic building science blew me away. And uh, they've been innovating and evolving and they've done a great job over the past years and I'm excited to see where they are today. So uh, thanks guys. And uh, I look forward to the presentation and the show. Thank you. So Kevin, that was one of the one of the best ones. We love your energy and passion. That is where we met uh, uh, at 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 the facility with uh, Art McCormick and Tommaso O'Leary. And uh, I'm going to do a tongue twister right now. Technical technique, technology, train the trainer, train the train. So we have TT T all over the boards. Um, I, I can never repeat that again, but um, I, I enjoyed the time in New York. Uh, I've enjoyed what's become in Chicago with the trainings that we have there. And uh, there's many facilities in our marketplace that have trainings. So throughout tonight's event, you'll see us post in the chat, many organizations that do that training. So if you know people that train, share that with people that might want to get trained if you're looking for trainings, uh, we're glad you're here because that's what we're talking about tonight. And I don't think you're gonna see a place quite like we're going to find tonight. This is incredible. We had a four hour run through last night and we didn't get through everything. So um, I'm happy to be here for episode seven on Passive House Accelerator Construction Tech. And I pass the mic. To Sean St. Amore. Hey, good evening, good afternoon, and wherever you're at, good morning. Good to have you here today. So we are at BCIT's High Performance Building Lab, where my good old friend Alex, we're going to talk about 
Uh, the mockups that have been created, we have a mockup library. We're going to talk about uh, how the course runs and a bit of the history of how this magical space has, be has been created. So I got first introduced to it in uh, 2017. I took the January course and then all of a sudden I took the uh, certification um, test in May. And uh, a few months later, I was a certified passive house trades person. And in January, at the end of the day, I kind of said to Alex, hey, Alex, if you're ever looking for an instructor, I sure would like to be one. And uh, somehow he got fooled by my, uh, you know, my swagger maybe, I don't know what it was, but he was like, hey, I like that kid, I should bring him back. And uh, I've been involved in the instructor team and it's a fantastic team here. It's not just, you know, one or two people. We have a lot of uh, key industry people that get to come in and teach very uh, a bunch of different uh, segments of the course really exciting and uh, again with COVID they were able to switch and make it online and uh, in a few few weeks the uh, tradesperson course will be featured so you've got courses being offered by Passos Canada, BCIT and uh, NEPHN through the EMU group with Mariana and Enrico great people there and then with uh, FIA so there's lots of options to become a tradesperson uh, a certified Passos tradesperson so um, Thank you for joining, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of mock-ups soon, but first, let's uh, give a bit of intro to Alex. Hi, everyone. So, uh, yes, Alex here. Um, I'm the guy behind the camera most of the time, and, <laughs> and, and Sean, and uh, I think we have around 15 part-time instructors working in the lab from time to time. Uh, they're the experts. They're the, the communicators. I'm usually behind the scenes, so I'll be, I'll be actually filming Sean with a handheld camera in a few minutes. And Sean will give you an example of the, the kind of teaching we do here using mock-ups, using a teaching house and, and using all sorts of funky uh, uh, technologies. Uh, I wanted to say quickly, BCIT is located. Uh, we have five campuses. We're in and near Vancouver in British Columbia. Um, we have about 50,000 students. So as a, as a school, we're pretty large. Uh, and within all the schools that we have, we have the School of uh, Nursing, the School of Business, School of Computer Science, so on. We have the School of Construction. And, and within the School of Construction, we teach all the uh, programs and, and, and areas you can think of when it comes to construction. We have all the trades program, we have all the technology program, we teach architectural science, engineering, and so on. And about, and I always get this wrong, but about four, Five years ago, Sandra Roller knocked at our door and said, hey, you guys are the reference in British Columbia for hands-on. Why aren't you teaching passive house? And why aren't you teaching uh, envelope first, high performance building science? And uh, she convinced us to create the space. And uh, with the help of folks like Sean uh, that are connected with industry, that are aware of the latest and, and, and the different techniques, we were able to create a space that is, is quite interesting. And so we do uh, uh, day training, night and weekend training here. We've organized a few socials where we actually had folks uh, drinking wine and eating cheese and so on. So it's a space that gets people together to talk about Passive House. Uh, and then quickly, I wanna add, we realized at one point that not everyone could come to us. So we started a program called the Lab in a Box. So this is the lab, the Lab in a Box is a smaller version of this. And Sean has been our, our lead instructor for this, going on the road from small community to small community, trying to get some hands-on training done locally. And, and near the end of the program tonight, I'll be able to tell you a bit more, but we had to switch to online because of COVID. So we have uh, quite a few restrictions with, with, with the whole crowd uh, gathering. So we are now online uh, offering our courses in a somewhat hands-on manner. So you will we'll watch a video, I believe, uh, late, later that gives you a sample of, of what we mean by hands-on when we're online. But uh, if you're interested, it doesn't matter where you are anymore. Uh, you can be in South America, you can be in Europe, you can join us uh, for the online courses as well. The BCIT courses provides a solid understanding of the principles of high performance building. We go through the step by step. You have a vented deck assembly up top. How do you transfer the air barrier not only through here, you come up the wall 
how do I get it back over the deck area to the wall in behind in a continuous manner? There's not this fear or uncertainty attached with, you know, the, the, the PowerPoints, and it's a very practical approach to show exactly how that gets done. As an online participant to this specific program, I did feel like I was in the front row all the time in every session. Just to learn the tips and trades and not just be driven by theory and PowerPoints. You have to get down and talk about the details, show people how these things work together. I'm James Bourget, part-time instructor at High Performance Lab at BCIT. Part-time lecturer here at BCIT. A proud partner and sponsor of the BCIT High Performance Lab. I'm an architect in Vancouver and also a BCIT student. A Red Seal Carpenter, High Performance Trades person and student at BCIT. Cut. <laughs> All right, so why don't we uh, check out the lab? So we'll have Alex on the uh, kind of GoPro. We're in the lab and hopefully uh, if it breaks up, Zach will let us know, but we want to show you the mock-up library that we have. So you can see here, again, seven different mock-ups in the space if you want to pan out. I'm going to pull one out. This is one of my favorites. The mock-ups are really flexible to move around to showcase. And it's really key because I hope that on all your future jobs, you can see how quick it, it, it is to build one of these, but also how important it is to just show all the different details. So this is one where you can quickly see the foundation to, uh, to floor connection and how the air barrier connects, the floor to wall connection, wall to window, and then again, wall to roof. And so you can see how you have the sweater detail, the air barrier continuity, Again, in BC, we're all about a rain screen. So every mock-up you'll see will have a rain screen. All the different drainage property, properties, where the window sits in, uh, in corresponding in the wall based on the, you know, the R value. You can see this wall, the sample here, it's a triple pane. So high performance passive house grade window. We're lucky here in BC where we've got six passive house certified windows to kind of pick from. Um, and then how, again, we deal with the connections so that again, you've got the air barrier continuity throughout. So again, pretty simple to make a mock-up, but it's really important because how many times are you talking to trades for the first time about the different layers? And in this simple, this is a three foot by six foot detail that shows everything you're gonna do. The only thing that we, you know, we don't do that you could even add is again, is plugs and uh, you know, pipe penetration, but those are pretty simple to add on. Um, a couple other features again is just how this mock-up highlights, you know, from cladding all the way to the interior. And you can see some of those real critical points of how you create the, the proper air barrier connection. So again, we've got, you know, different wall types you want. You can see here, this is kind of like the, the fat wall where it's again got cellulose in. So it's a two by eight one. Here's with the, uh, the eye joist. And again, you can see the different layers. So, it's great when we're teaching the course that if anyone wants to say that, hey, I got a brand new wall to make up, we pretty much have it here with the different materials. So it's pretty exciting to be able to go through in the course how you can construct each one and hopefully then you can build it for your project so you can show all the different traits. So again, here we're gonna go from the inside to the exterior. So again, you can see how thick it is. You've got a two by four wall that in this case is that interior service cavity it doesn't need to be insulated, but it could be, but this is where you're gonna run all of your electrical and your plumbing will be in that, in this surface cavity. Then you have the uh, sheathing layer that will be the vapor control layer, as well as the air barrier. So you can see, uh, you can kind of see here, again, we've taped it. And if there was a seam here, it would be taped. Um, so then we've got this big part here. So this two by eight section here, which could also be an eye joist is that sweater. So all of this then is filled with cellulose. You've got an, the membrane wrapping around that's holding in the cellulose. Again, furring strips and then cladding. You know, this is a nice wall again where you've got the open, uh, um, so you can see again, the open uh, uh, grain direction. And then again, all the proper details with uh, cladding and, uh, and weather bearers. So you can see, you know, the plexiglass is put here so you can see you know, the, all that cellulose that's in there. They've got a, a wood board, uh, a thin layer here of the fiber board that allows this to be vapor open so it can dry really well. Um, 
and again, then the, you know, the cladding details. So and again, high performance windows, you can see again how we have it. Um, you know, details on flashing are, are in here as well. So it's pretty simple for, you know, for a mock-up to just show all those crucial details that we want to show our trades to ensure they take this one detail and they multiply it by how many windows you have in a project or, you know, for the full, full wall space. So it's, again, fantastic to have a library here of different mock-ups to show builders, you know, what wall type you want to build. Because at the end of the day, we always have the conversation about you want to build the thinnest wall, the highest R value, the cheapest cost. And then if you care about the uh, carbon footprint, you know, worrying about the upfront uh, carbon footprint. So those are pretty much the four constraints we deal with on top of, you know, the building science stuff. I'd just like to add how great the mock-ups are at telling the story of interior finish all the way to, to, to the functional layers, the insulation, the air barrier. So I, I, we have a couple of questions that are specific to, to, um, to this mock-up. So maybe we should dive into some of those, Sean. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, one big picture one is, uh, I think, a question for the folks at BCIT, and that's just, is, is it possible to get pictures and descriptions of the mock-ups? Is there any, you know, are there resources like that? So um, that's just to kind of put that um, be in your bonnet, I guess. Uh, so Norm in Pennsylvania wanted to, to uh, see some windowsill detail. Uh, so maybe that, that's the first one. Sure. So we come back. Alex, we just zoom into here. So again, we've got that sweater detail, right? So this is, a, this is an interesting mock-up because it's all kind of uh, Canadian products. So I'll just look at here. So you actually have hemp as the insulation on the inside. And then you've got a fiber board on the outside. So it's, it's one of our low carbon upfront um, mock-ups that I really like to showcase. So here again, you've got the sweater detail. And so whatever colliding this could be, again, it could be rock wool, it could be foam, it could be whatever you need to be. Again, it's trimmed down. Before you put in the flashing, they've added a layer of, of mesh on top of the, uh, the, the peel and stick windowsill tape, which is covering the membrane, which is then connected back to here. So when you look at the air barrier connection, it goes window, tape to other tape extends out over the membrane and then the membrane goes through. Um, that's this particular connection. You could also have it where you'd have another tape that, that would cover over here into this layer and then that could be the, the air barrier. So that's, and again, we've, this particular window has a bit of a groove. So this flashing could get tucked underneath so that there's no way for any uh, air or water to get in from that side. And then again, you've got a back dam with the membrane taped over. So again, there's really no way for water to get this point. And you can see the air barrier connection in that, in that point. So hopefully Norm, that mm. helps that awesome. particular detail. What's, what I like about this too, again, there's lots of redundancy. Again, it's not just, oh, one piece of material that's keeping the water out. You've got multiple layers. So if water got, in behind here, it, it's got room to get out. If it happens to get along here, then it, again, with the rain screen, it can find its way out. So lots of redundancies to ensure water is staying out of the building. Sean, when it goes to that mesh, is that is that so that the, the pan doesn't get compressed or is that so insects don't have a route? No, it, it's more of ensuring that there's, it's, it's again, it's a small rain screen detail between the, the sill and the membrane so that water could get out if it ever got in there. Um, and also some uh, sill tapes might melt because of the heat of the flashing. So it's again, it's another little buffer layer to help out for two significant reasons. So again, we always talk about adding rain screen. Well, again, that's a bit of a rain screen detail. Rain screen here. So just, uh, you know, again, that whole belts and suspenders approach to building. I just really like these, you know, added a little uh, steps to ensure that the whole wall assembly is gonna dry out, not just the wall's going to dry out, the sill can dry out, and uh, and everything around it. While, mm -hmm. while you're there, can you continue down the wall to see at the foundation line? Sure. Yeah, sure. So again, here you've come down. You've got the, uh, again, insulation on our foundation. Because we're talking typically uh, R20 insulation underneath the slabs, you know, R40 walls, um, R10 windows, and R4, uh, R60 you know, in the attics is typical R values. In this case, we're a little bit under, 
Um, but we wanted to show, again, just the different layers. Because again, in, in BC, we're still dealing with the step code. And so we've got, you know, different uh, steps or different wall thicknesses that people can work towards as they're moving up to the higher levels. So in BC, by 2032, every building's got to be, you know, pretty close to passive house at the step code five level. So here you can see go from the membrane, the membrane then connects to the foam and ensuring that you've got the proper continuity in that pros. So in this case, actually, if you look at it more detailed, membrane to tape, tape to tape, tape to the concrete. And that technically is the air barrier system on here. I'd just like to point out how, how much these, how, how well these mock-ups are a training tool and a, and a process of figuring out the details. Um, uh, I know, I know one of the things that your takeaways you wanted to point out, Sean, was that how, how easy it could be for every project to build a three by six mock-up to figure these things out and have an open discussion with the trades. Uh, I, I think it's inspirational to see all the details that you guys figured out on the mock-up. And what's nice about this too, again, right? Like this is free. You can play around with this. If you fail, who cares? It's the mock-up. I, I would hope that you would want to try out your systems and your processes on something small where there's adaptability, there's, you know, an opportunity to, to, you know, figure it out and make it concrete before you start the project where again, you know, critical things come to play, schedules, cost. If you've already sorted it out, you can take that plan and, and implement it and move it forward and, and then execute. One thing I've learned personally is that the mock-ups really build teamwork and, and, and the conversation between the GC, the architect and the people implementing the work. And when you're listening to the trades and listening to their expertise and their experience and that they have impact in the systems that they use, the conversation opens up and it stops that adversarial relationship with designers and, and trades people and, and people making decisions. And then it really breaks it down into functionality of the systems that you guys are in playing. And I love the work that you guys are doing to implement the systems approach to air barriers and everything connecting within that air barrier systems. I think that's one of the more important parts of the one of the tra of the trainings is to just go with the system and learn how they connect and then ask the right questions to the right people when you need. And Kevin, that's a really good point because one thing about the mock-up is, you know, one person could build this. When we're talking about building our homes and our buildings, we're incorporating a lot of different traits. And typically, you know, if you think of right here, we've got the framer that's framing, and now we got to figure out when are they putting an air barrier piece in that then gets connected to the insulator who's working on the inside. We then have the exterior cladding company working out here, and then you have the window company. So pretty quickly, you know, you've got four or five trades working together to create this continued air barrier. And if one person gets it wrong, the system fails. So it's really great to get everybody on board to say, you know, who's putting on the piece of tape that connects to the next piece of tape or, you know, which layer And here you can quickly say, okay, well, who's doing this tape? Is it in your, is it in your quote? Is it in your estimate? Did you budget for it? Okay, let's move on so that you don't get to a job. And all of a sudden someone puts in the window and they forgot to put in, you know, a piece of tape and then there's, you know, the finger pointing. So it really helps to eliminate really quickly of like, who's doing what, when are you going to do it? And have you got it figured out? And then can you now teach it to your trades and to your team so that it gets done and, and gets to be, uh, you know, uh, done properly, you know, in the process. Yeah, so the just a, a one point is, is that it's a great tool for the GC, the person running the show, the site supervisor to create team buy-in and to explain everyone, this is what it should look like, especially the way it's built there from functional to finish. And you're able to show step by step because a lot of times this might be new to to some people out there that it's the first time they're doing it or working on a passive house and that site super is the air boss or the xo of air tightness the person that's responsible to make sure that you hit those air tightness goals and the difference between between a code air barrier system and a passive house air barrier system is figuring out these details up front and executing them a non-code air barrier, you know, project that tests to blow a door at three air changes per hour in my market. It just means that maybe they didn't find all the little details. They didn't connect it to base or other things, but the code recommends a continuous air barrier, but the difference is the skill set of the team being executing those details. So Susan, Susan Rowley, you had a, um, a question about rain. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, Sean. Thanks, uh, Zach. Um, yeah, so when I'm looking at that from here, the, uh, the, the, the siding, the wood siding on the outside of the yep. fat wall, 
you have gaps, and I'm sorry, your real ignorance is going to be revealed. You have gaps between each of the wood, and do you ever worry about, you know, the rain coming in like we're expecting more extreme weather events and horizontal rain and who cares? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay because the membranes that are used behind here, um, again, are more open faced. Um, so you can see here that, for example, this one you can, sorry, really see, again, you can see the black membrane. And so this has been designed so that you can still have some UV degradation, but it keeps the water out. I, I mean, most North American projects haven't really used open face, but a lot of European projects have this. And you know, the difference is, is they really like seeing wood and they'll put a, a pine or an oak finish. And in 20 years, this will stain really nice. And then they know in 20 years, oh, we'll replace that finish. And so when you look at sometimes the, you know, the material choices, when you're looking for those say low carbon um, options, you know, this is something we're not used to in North America. In Europe, it's used a lot. And we always, so there's gaps is, that's the way it's, it's not like a shiplack, shiplack or. No, there, there is a half inch gap, but again, if you look on the detail, again, they're cut. So again, you know, rain for the most part is gonna come. You might get some rain driven that's gonna come in there, but you've got the rain screen that allow it to, to get out. And all the materials that are in this wall allow for drying to the outside. So there's no way that if moisture got in here that it's not gonna be able to get out during a drying phase. So also Susan, there's an air gap behind the cladding, right? Mm -hmm. So that if the rain goes in, it's still not getting, uh, it's, it's stopped by the membrane, but the back of the boards are allowed to dry. That's a great air gap. Yeah, thank you. What it really depends upon is how many Chinooks are coming through your area. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's all about the Chinooks. So, so Sean, one of the things to point out uh, is we talked about last night is while these mock-ups are here for trainings, many people that are here tonight are interested in trainings. So if there's a, if there's a training that you're looking for, please, please add that in the chat and, and we will make sure to, uh, to find out which training that aligns with. And we've posted a number of trainings from all the different groups and we'll continue to do so. So yeah, let's just talk about the, 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 sorry, the hands-on course here at BCIT. So one is, you know, being able to go through all the different mock-ups and understand how they different. And what's, what's unique as well is we have someone, sorry, some mock-ups that are actually old, but it's great to see how things have transitioned here in six or seven years that the lab has been open from when we first did a couple of mock-ups to then new products coming online and how they've been able to switch out. And I'll just show you the vestibule we have down here. So again, here's all of like the residential mock-ups. We even got some, you know, commercial mock-ups here that are pretty big scale. And then we get into the vestibule back here. And so we've got three of these ones where the, you know, you get a team of, of six to 12 people, again, non-COVID that can add on the air barrier and uh, either an exterior approach or interior approach. And as a team, install the windows and really try to figure out what you do. And then we will uh, um, put a blower door test on and a fog machine and smoke it so that everyone can see the leaks that they created and then what they got to do to fix it. And what's nice here is on the big um, uh, learning lab that we have here, we actually can do a blower door test and, and see it as well as with, you know, within this detail. So we've got the little mock-ups and then you have a really big one that shows even more detail. So there's a lot of opportunity to look at those nitty gritty details while you're here and not just, you know, spit about a whole bunch of information here. You get to, to dive into the nitty gritty and work on things. Alex, do you, is there anything that you yeah, want to share? I mean, the only piece I will add is that we are online now because of COVID and we see we're hands on the hands that get dirty are the hands of the instructor. You're at home uh, comfortable in your, in your chair, but you get to see the instructor build a wall in front of you. You get, to see the instructor do an air tightness test in front of you. You get the instructor to do the smoke tests and find the leaks with you. And you get to ask questions as we go. So you're, you're somehow stuck at home, but the seat you have is the best seat because you're um, uh, seeing everything that we see through the camera and you get to uh, 
uh, ask as many questions as you get. So we, we are not as hands-on as we used to be because of COVID, but we expanded our, our reach by having an online uh, present that is somewhat, somewhat hands-on. I'd just like to point out that the, the, the students who take the tradesperson course in my market tend to lean more towards being kinesthetic learners, meaning that they learn from watching, listening, and also doing. So the thinking fingers in an environment of a lab like that really invokes the thought process of those trades to say, hey, I can do this because there is a little bit of anxiety anytime you're talking about Passive House of can I hit those performance goals? And what the class does is it sets everyone at ease to price it, to execute it, to say, yes, I can do it. And that little bit of knowledge and experience gives them the ability to say, I can do this. The certification gives them the confidence to say, I have the knowledge to be able to execute this, you know. Uh, another thing to point out is that, you know, in the, in the land of Passive House, there's a few different flavors out there of, you know, the, the P Passive House Institute, there's the Passive Institute US, and they have a builder's training program, which is very similar geared towards the trades. Uh, it's just, there's many different opportunities, but we're all talking about high performance buildings. And uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. And they're very lucky in BCIT to have this. In New York City, we had uh, the Association for Energy Affordability that had a dedicated training lab. And uh, you know, we're looking to, 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 to keep that rolling. We just don't have a, a plan at this moment to, uh, to, to, to do that right now. So, but it, I, I envy your facility there in BC. And, and I guess it's a small world, right? Like we, uh, we get uh, Sandra to take the course in Ireland. We get Kevin to meet Sandra. I get to meet Kevin. And, 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 and somehow we're all working towards the same goal of having those super insulated no thermal bridge airtight building. So Scott, you had a couple questions about the thick wall. Okay, Scott says, I don't see a membrane on the outside of the wood fiber. So on this particular one, they don't have it, but in this particular climate, like this wood fiber product, this could actually be the WRB. Uh, again, in BC, where we're a little bit more paranoid about organic material being on the outside, we will add another one. Um, just again, we, because we get so much moisture on the walls, that it's a nice addition to have it out there to protect it. But again, once you kind of cross either into the Okanagan or the Rockies, again, you could eliminate it because this material has paraffins on it that allow for water to wick off. It's just in BC where we're a little bit more uh, conscious of our history with our leaky condos to keep, you know, a membrane out there as well. What kind of membrane is it? Is it a peel and stick, um, high perm house wrap? Yeah, on this one here, you can see again, uh, you know, it's either a secret product or a Proclima product where again, it's vapor open. The perms are, you know, 25 and plus to allow for a lot of drying. So the difference between uh, the European products versus some of the North American ones is these are monolithic, meaning that they don't have pores so that, uh, you know, they're incredibly airtight. So once you put tape on it and get it all connected, it's really a nice blanket. Whereas some of the North American ones have tiny pores. And so those are tiny air uh, holes in your envelope. So it's tough to get to passive house levels because they're actually leaking in the process. Whereas these ones are monolithic and work really well for being a WRB and an air barrier. Awesome. So Brad, you had a question about the exterior drip cap detail. The question is, can you review the exterior drip cap detail and window installation? So again, a lot of these ones uh, again, are really about belts and suspenders. And so, I mean, most of the time, this drip flashing would be right against your plywood. Well, now that you've got insulation in between it, how do you connect this to back here? And also, this is where we talk about another passive house principle is the thermal bridge. Well, we don't want this metal to be connected to this. So in this case, it's taped on to the membrane. So you can see the nice shingling effect of how water would come down over top and then be able to wick away. But this is connected. It's, it would be tucked under the uh, rain screen. And so that holds it and clamps it in place. But then the continuity of, uh, sorry, not continuity, but just the, the connection. So the air barrier connection is the membrane. So that's coming and then going through and then being taped and then comes back, but it's just added on. So it's a really, slick way to ensure you get the shingling effect you need to keep the water away by stopping the thermal bridge that would occur if this is connected to the structure. 
So if, here you can kind of see a couple of really good details is that there's a block that then has insulation around it. You also see this really skookum detail where you've got some over insulation of the frame. I mean, this could be a little bit bigger, but it, it still shows the process of, of how the air barrier is running back. You've got insulation to stop the thermal bridge of, of this connection detail. You've got blocking in here to be able to connect this piece to this piece or this piece to here to give you that structure. So your whole window aesthetics is completely done. And uh, what else have we got to show you? So, so again, we've got the air barrier part. We've shown you the structure, how it's connected, how it's nicely thermally broken. Uh, again, how the water is taken care of in the detail, how the window is set. So typically we like to say that the middle of the glass or the middle of the R value is connected to the middle of the R value of the wall. It's, it's pretty close. It's kind of like a one third, two third ratio, but it's pretty good. So if you, if you had the thermal imaging camera, you could kind of see that the, 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 the lines would be pretty consistent and they're not bouncing around or having any potential for condensation in the corners. So really kind of nice, uh, nice detail. So hopefully that answers, you know, that question. And again, all the mock-ups have a very similar, you know, similar detail of how when they've got the extra insulation, how we try to, you know, ensure that the thermal bridge is broken between the flashing and the, and the structure. Fantastic. Um, D. Carawan, you had a couple of questions. Um, yes, I'm in Southern California, and I was wondering if you do mock-ups only for your climate, or do you do mock-ups for a variety of climates? Sorry, Zach, I can't hear it. Um, shoot. Uh, do you do mock-ups just for the uh, British Columbia climate, or do you do mock-ups for other climates? D is based in Southern California. Yeah, so sorry, yes, we've just done them for, so we've actually done them for Canada, meaning that uh, uh, NRCAN put out a, a program to build. So we've got, you know, kind of four specific ones. This is the newest one that again is more of my favorite because it shows the embodied carbon. Um, and again, in our Canadian climate where it's colder, we've got the exterior insulation. So the vapor control layer in our market is on the interior side because most of the year we've got uh, outward, outward drying. So in California, again, the vapor uh, control layer would need to be modified based on the zone. So of course, once you get into, you know, I guess below three, you know, you got to be careful of the vapor control layer in your system. So one thing to point out as a good opportunity, D, in your market is to find a project on the Passive House Accelerator site that has where it's located in your market, in your climate, and then kind of reach out to the, there's some details maybe mm -hmm. on the Passive House Accelerator site showing how it was put together, and then maybe reach out to the architect and ask them what their, uh, their, their process was. Because the community that we have in Passive House is amazing at sharing. And then you want to replicate what's been accomplished in your market and then use a mock-up to innovate before it becomes a full building. Uh, and every climate's going to be different, um, uh, but that's what the model's for. But these learning lessons and teaching lessons are pretty much universal about air barriers and building science. So no matter where you are, it's just the extremities of your climate will be slightly different in, uh, in you know, compared to Vancouver to Southern California. Hey, yeah, Sean, I'm going to ask you a technical question real quick. Uh, Evan catches his awesome, uh, his breath from that awesome response. Are any of these windows operable? Because I, I heard on Passive House, you're not allowed to open windows. So this is this is <laughs> this is a, a true technical feat here, and and that's opening to the inside. So uh, can you can you just love it, Sean? That was it. Now, now again, is with the with the European design where it's operating to the inside. Again, is the fact that now you're able to over insulate because right now, for the most part, the window has been the worst detail. Now with the extra layer of glass, and so now that we've got the triple pane, the, the real issue is this connection point in our windows because this is you know, uh, doing well performing, this is doing okay. It's this joint now that is the worst part in our, in our building. And so if you can get some insulation over it, you can improve the R value in a sense that it's missing out here. So this is a, again, a nice deal. People still in North America like the outswing we, we just lose out the option of over insulating our frames. And so here you can actually, again, the mock-up does a really good job of showcasing how 
you over insulate it. And again, like the corners are so critical and the mock-up does a really good job of again, being fancy and showing the facades, but showing what's happening at the corners and how we, we gotta be critical on the taping detail at those joints. So again, thanks Mark for that question because I, I forgot to highlight you know, these two important parts of the, of the mock-up. That, that came up in, in, uh, in a, an episode a few weeks ago too, when we're having these wonderful passive house windows and then we, we, neg we neglect to understand that because of how we install them, that we're not achieving the R values. So the point that you brought up that we can insulate these frames because they're operable to the interior or, or quite possibly fixed, depending on your assembly, it allows you to truly get that R8 window to an R8. Uh, th that was brilliant, Sean. I'm glad. And, and again, I mean, we're, we're, we're also building homes for hundred plus years. And so by chance, if you had to replace the window, you know, again, it's designed effectively that, you know, this comes off, this comes off and you're mm -hmm. able to get back to the, to the window. If you had to pull it out or replace it without having to tear apart all the <clears> membranes <throat> and the insulation. So that's another critical part too, is, you know, how do we build it where it's also future proofed? Maintainable. Because, you know, these membranes and tapes should be lasting 100 plus years. And so, you know, in case we had to modify it, how do we don't break down the full structure where it's a minimal, uh, you know, fixes versus having to redo the whole thing. So just keep in mind of that. Uh, that's another detail in, in this process is just how do we, you know, how do we, if we had to put it on or take it off, how we don't damage the rest of the, uh, you know, the cladding details. Right. So we have a, another question from uh, this one from Carlo Cremonini. Uh, yeah, I just had a question about the wood fiber insulation uh, and how it stands up to weather during the build. And uh, if you guys could just talk about it a little bit more. So I happen to have a bigger chunk of it. So again, you know, wood fiber again is, is something that we're trying to bring to the North American market. There's a, a factory that's trying to get started in Maine, which is pretty exciting. Because uh, right now, again, it's, it's being uh, imported in from Europe as, as all the other products, you know, used to be imported. We are working on, you know, getting some local manufacturing, which is pretty good. So this particular product, again, has a WRB and out here. So it can be stuck out in the, in the weather for a while. Um, a lot of times now you're seeing the prefab companies, you know, install this in a prefab wall so it can take care of it. Um, in BC, uh, typically we're seeing... But again, that uh, membrane being installed over top of it, just because, um, you know, yes, this can stay into the weather for a long time. You know, we don't want it to be as long. Uh, moisture will allow this to grow by about, uh, uh, about one or one eighth. And once it dries, it'll go back to its original size. So again, pretty robust product. Uh, and the fact that again, it's carbon footprint, it's uh, about 10% more than uh, Rockwool uh, 110. But because it's so rigid, the install could be uh, faster. So when you're looking at the cost of installing wood fiber versus rock wool, there's some, uh, there's some savings and, and potential, you know, it's not as expensive as you might see having to import it in, but from a carbon footprint compared to this to, to mineral wool, you know, that's, that's open for discussion. Now, I'm, again, I'm biased, I rep this product, um, but there are about four or five other companies that do manufacture it and import it into North America. So there's uh, definitely some options for wood fiber based insulation products. Just one, one point I'd like to make Sean is uh, there's so much to see in that lab. I'd like to really not get too caught up in the questions and then show the other items in the lab. Um, uh, we got about 12 minutes left. So I just want to make sure we see everything um, uh, that yeah. you guys have there because it's an amazing facility and we've only seen seven mock-ups. Yeah, so uh, I, I saw a question I think Susan had about uh, uh, ERVs or HRVs. So you can see this mock-up over here, you know, shows how you can, uh, you know, so there's a Zender unit on the backside, but you can see the piping and how it goes to the rooms for supply and exhaust. And we can actually test it where we turn on the device and you could test and, and balance each head so you get your house to be balanced. So again, that was a, another mock-up they asked. This is a really cool project that Alex was involved. It's a, a showcase piece for, um, uh, science museums where, you know, kids and people can learn about all the different uh, passive house principles and, and how it works. And then we also have a, a mock-up for a heat pump. So again, there's lots going on in this lab. And Zach, is there other questions? Sean, it looks a lot like that icebox challenge you were involved with. 
Yes, it is. So again, so everyone knows the ice box challenge uh, boxes were made in this lab. Thanks, because Alex, I kind of conned him in. He went on vacation, and, and so I took his keys, and, uh, and we made the boxes here. So again, they were prefabricated in the shop and then sent around North America. So again, there's lots of, lots of uh, things start off in this lab and then get sent off to the world. It's pretty exciting. I hope this, uh, I, I hope this uh, Tech Tuesdays eventually inspires more ice box challenges throughout North America. Yeah, and again, you know, we, we spoke of this yesterday, and I guess I kind of forgot is, is one of the things we want to showcase you is, is oh, Mark and, and Kevin are instructors. I'm an instructor. We need more instructors. So hopefully that you, you know, get inspired by this and you work with your colleges and, and create these labs because we really, we need one of these in every major city in North America. So again, let us know how we can help you out, get this thing started so that we can offer more of these courses to, to builders because we all need to be building this way. And so we really need to start teaching and, and getting on board. So um, I was inspired in 2017 and, you know, within four or five months, I, you know, learned how to teach and, and, uh, and now I just love talking about high performance. So it's pretty exciting. So just, just to bring everyone on board, uh, somebody in the chat pointed out the icebox challenges building a code like building and then a high performance passive house like building and the community guesses what the uh how long it'll take for that ice to melt you know I'm a, one of the things that that we talk about in building science and construction is they size heating heating and co cooling equipment based on the tons you know 2000 pounds of 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 ice is 12000 BTUs to actually make that or create that. And that's what we would use in the, in the ice box challenge. So it's a great way to do marketing and, and develop that, but it's good to, to, to get, to get involved. Sean, you have them in your hand, right? Yeah. So these are like two little mini ones that, uh, so one would just be a regular coat house. Another one, we have an actual sweater. And so then we put ice in one and then a couple hours later we can show that. And I actually take these ones to, uh, to elementary schools and show kids because they really see, you know, the ice melting over you know an hour presentation they can see the difference between a regular one and an insulated one and then we talk about you know thermos uh coffee mugs and thermos and uh, and, and you'd be able to see the difference um okay so uh, julie you had a question yeah i think um i asked about what um the coursework was like up there how long it takes and somebody sent me the i think zach you sent me okay the link, you're so. set yeah, they, yeah. Uh, okay yeah. great Thank you. Uh, so moving on to craig you had a question about training in ontario and the question is where would you recommend for training in ontario so right now the best option is uh any of the online courses so again uh really any of the four that are that we've kind of talked about you could actually sign up for you, you know like you could actually be anywhere in the world and I, there's even another course being offered in australia so all this online stuff pick, you know, which one you want to work with and go for it. Uh, I know that uh, post COVID, they will have a training course. Um, at, I think it's Brown College. I think that's where they've had one before. And uh, they'll definitely be more, um, you know, in, in the new normal. So, so Sean, one of the things we covered last night in the prep is, uh, is, is videos and people and people sharing. So you shared a lot of mockups tonight. I want to not only challenge, but request and encourage people when you do mock-ups for, for your bid process, for your plans and for your trade reviews, go ahead and make a video, send it to Passive House Accelerator, allow us to share it with the rest of the industry. Because if you have a, uh, uh, an assembly that works for your building typology and your climate, uh, odds are someone else can learn from it. So please share that and we will continue to share it. As we uh, wrap up, one of the things we like to do is get our uh, special presenter to talk about their mentor. So let me just switch cameras so Alex can talk about someone that has inspired him. I'm glad you asked me last night so I got time to think about it. I think the uh, official answer would be the 15 instructors that uh, work with us because I learned from each of them. But if you absolutely need name, I spent a lot of time in the last few months with two gentlemen. So Marcel Studer, who's a builder here locally, uh, and uh, James Bourget, who's also uh, a tradesperson and, uh, and a passive house consultant. So uh, James and, and Marcel have taught me so much of the te technical stuff that I'll, I'll name them as my mentors. And for those that will know, Marcel was on a few weeks ago bringing us some Canadian funk. 
So, and if you, one of these days we'll get James on, James is the one that taught me about what is your plan. And uh, he doesn't really like tell you about it. He yells it in your face to make sure you really understand and you get that you need to develop a plan as you start your projects. And so he'll constantly be saying, what is your plan? What is your plan? What is your air bear strategy, exterior, interior? What is it? What is your plan? What is your plan? And what is your plan? Before I go to sponsors, I want to do a really fast, we, we were talking about this yesterday, a really fast um, orientation to a couple of resources that folks might find useful on the Passive House Accelerator website. Um, so this is the homepage of the Accelerator website, and you can find um, videos of, of prior Construction Tech Tuesday events or, or happy hours by clicking on one of these. You can also find um, episodes of the podcast. So if you click on the Construction Tech Tuesday, you you know you see the the registration, which I'm going to say a, a word about. Um, but you also can access the uh, videos from prior prior events. So uh, all of these videos are also available on our YouTube channel. Another note is that uh, when you receive the Zoom link, but when you register, that Zoom link is actually good for every future. Uh, every future uh, Passive House Accelerator Construction Tech Tuesday. So you don't have to keep on registering. You certainly can if you want to, if that's the easiest thing. Um, but just know that when you register, that, that, that same link will work next week and the next week after. And that link has a message. In the message, you can add it. To, you can add the event to your calendar as a recurring item, if you like, um, so that it's always there for you in your, in your, in your, uh, in your digital ca calendar. But the Construction Tech Tuesday page link, um, please send, share it with your with your buddies um, and get them to to register. They can choose to join the, the mailing list or not and get that Zoom link. You can give them the Zoom link directly too if you like. But we like people um, to have the chance to sign up for the mailing list if they want to, so they can get news from us. All right. So I want to. Um, I have a lot of thank yous to make. We have some new sponsors um, that are on board for um, beginning in, in 2021, and so th this list has gotten a little bit longer, which is super exciting. None of the work that we do here, the Construction Tech Tuesday, the Happy Hour, the podcast, would happen without the support of these fine companies. And we really encourage you to support them and include them in your projects. So our founding sponsors are 475 High Performance Building Supply, Baxt Ingui Architects, Glavel Foam Glass Gravel, Minotaur, Mitsubishi Electric Train HVAC US, uh, Partel, RDH Building Science, Stocorp, and Zola Windows. Our stakeholder partner is NYSERDA, and our patron sponsors are Innotech Windows and Doors and BR Plus A. Um, our current ep episode of the podcast uh, features Daniel Kress from Smart Plus Academy. Um, he does uh, virtual trainings if you're in Australia or you want to be on a Australian time when you're taking your uh, builder's training. Um, you can, you can uh, train with him. Uh, it's a great conversation. He's got really great nuggets about communicating the benefits of Passive House. A really, really fun um, chat with co-host Matthew Cutler-Welsh. Tomorrow, our first Passive House happy hour of the year features Michael Ingui, uh, principal of Bax Ingui Architects and founder of Passive House Accelerator. And he's gonna be talking about a, a really cool Passive House Plus retrofit in a New York City landmark district. And it will include um, a key player in the, um, at, from the city of New York as well. So it's gonna be a, a gangbuster um, uh, uh, event please join us tomorrow. Then next week, the Construction Tech Tuesday will feature Adam Romano, um, who came up a number of times today. Um, he's now at Stephen Winter Associates, and he'll be talking about Passive House Domestic Hot Water. It's going to be fact-filled and fast and, and uh, uh, very uh, fun. And then um, next week's Passive House Happy Hour will, include, will be about this stunning project in British Columbia, um, Killian Collins of Perkins and Will, uh, a dynamo of passive house design will be will be uh, um, sharing that. And uh, so lots of really great stuff to start the new year. Thanks.